so I will share my screen. Um, uh, yeah. Do you all see uh, my screen? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. I take this as a yes. <laughs> yeah, That's so. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our presentation on emotion regulation in internet addic addictive behaviors. We are Xian Zhong and uh, Elizabeth from Free University Amsterdam. Um, yeah, so a little bit introduction to this topic. Uh, nowadays, we rely more and more on the internet Internet addiction is a big problem among young people and uh, it relates to emotion regulation according to the academia. Uh, emotion regulation is a psychological term defined by, by growth as the activation of a goal to influence the emotion trajectory. So in the psychological theory, six well-recognized human emotion regulation strategies are acceptance, avoidance, problem solving, reprisal, uh, rumination, and suppression. Uh, emotion regulation process plays a vital role in the internet or social media addiction. Uh, internet addiction is associated with having greater difficulties in emotion regulation, and uh, it seems to act as a dysfunctional regulator of uh, emotional distress. An inadequate ability in emotion regulation could be the reason why social media addiction happened to so many individuals. Uh, and uh, about antidepression therapy, uh, it can restore uh, synaptic uh, plasticity for certain cognitive functions, basically to make the person feel better. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the base model. Um, you, uh, as you can see in the beginning, you receive a uh, stimulus from the outside world, for example, an urge to do something, and then your body senses the stimulus, you feel the urge and then your mind responds to the urge and eventually you prepare and uh, execute an action. So um, this model can be used in behaviors like going to social media or expressing your emotions. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so the research subject is a depressed person who suffers from medium to high level of stress. And uh, as you can see here, this is the um, base layer of the multi-layer adaptive network model. And uh, there are a few main elements here. So there are two WS states. There are stimulus from the outside world, which are stress and social media. Um, and then you sense the stimulus and make representation in your mind and uh, it impacts um, in the positive and negative belief states, uh, which are BS plus and uh, BS minus. Um, and then the adoption of three emotion regulation strategies, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, CS states, uh, control states of avoidance, uh, appraisal and uh, suppression. So about reappraisal, uh, it means to retell the story in a positive way. Uh, the person thus holds a uh, positive belief. It reduces negative beliefs. <clears throat> and uh, suppression, uh, meaning not expressing negative uh, emotions or feelings, which doesn't impact uh, belief states. And uh, the more you suppress your emotion, the less you feel it. And uh, the more you use one strategy, the less you use the other one. Um, so the third uh, strategy is avoidance, uh, which is in the form of going to social media. Uh, so the more this person is stressed, the more he goes to social media. So um, he prepares and uh, executes avoidance behavior 
This behavior can remove stress from the outside world in the short term. As you can see here, PSA, ESA, they are preparation and uh, execution, and uh, WSA, which is uh, impacted by these other two states. <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, so uh, this is our uh, multi-layer adaptive network model. Uh, as you can see in the first and second layer, uh, they show plasticity and the meta plasticity uh, of this person. So in uh, cognitive and learning theories, the more you practice something, the stronger your neuron connections are and the quicker you learn it. Um, and uh, emotion regulation strategies can be learned and unlearned. Uh, your neurons are adaptive, the connection ways between neurons and your learning speed change as you learn it. Yeah. Um, so as you can see in the first layer, connection ways of three strategies and the threshold of adapting avoidance are presented. They are impacted by corresponding states in the base layer and the second layer. Uh, the threshold of sensitivity to social media is also adaptive. The more you use it, the vulnerable you are. So you want to use it more. And um, yeah, in the second layer, the learning speed of three strategies are presented. As the connection ways of neuron change, uh, your learning speed also changes accordingly. So basically, the more you learn it, the quicker you learn it. Um, yeah, so this model is a um, temporal causal model. The temporal aspect means the value of each state in the network is changing over time gradually. And uh, the causal uh, aspect means the current states are affected by other states, where causes are presented with errors and uh, um, that contains weights. Yeah, so we then update our state value using the follow combination functions. Uh, first, uh, the states. Uh, with only one incoming connection are updated with the identity function. We assign values uh, of the previous state multiplied with the weight. Uh, most of states in our network uh, have multiple incoming connections. Uh, most of these states are updated with the advanced logistic function, which is often used in neural network models. Um, and um, as you can see here, uh, this function aggregates the impact of the incoming connections and has two hyperparameters we need to train, um, which are sigma and uh, threshold tau. <clears throat> yeah, um, in the first layer, uh, the weights for suppression, reappraisal, and uh, avoidance are updated with a uh, happen learning mechanism. This mechanism is able to adapt uh, connection weights over time. Uh, this characteristic makes this function especially useful as a form of plasticity within uh, neuroscience. Uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, uh, next one, yeah. As you can see here, mu is a um, persistent parameter. Whenever an action is performed, all the neurons involved in executing this action will fire around the same time as those uh, involved in censoring the performance of this action. Um, yeah, next one, yeah. <laughs> So the final type of activation function is the step mode function, which is used to activate the therapy. <clears throat> Within the time delta and time row, 
therapy is activated, we can adjust these two parameters to find the impact of a therapy with um, different time ranges. Yeah. So uh, we use this model to investigate two different scenarios of the same client. And this is a client who suffers from depression and also from social media addiction. And typically the client suppresses emotions rather than reappraising negative thoughts. So when something happens, which gives a net negative feeling, the client puts on a poker face and doesn't talk about it. The client suppresses. Uh, the client has mood swings, but over time, the negative belief states are higher than the positive belief states. And during a negative belief state, uh, the client seeks out for avoidance. And in this case study, it means going to social media. And going to social media gives a short-term positive feeling. But the next time the client feels bad, the client is likely to go back to social media again. And this goes on and on and on, developing some kind of addiction. And we will investigate the situation with and without therapy. So during therapy, the client receives antidepressant treatments, which helps to reactivate the reappraisal mechanism. So when the therapy teaches the client to learn how to reappraise negative emotions, the client can rethink a negative situation. So let's say, for example, uh, the client is a student and receives a very low grade for a course. The client thinks, oh, hey, this is the opportunity to learn better next time. So uh, the client learns how to find a more positive interpretation of a bad situation. And this way finds a more positive belief state where ultimately uh, the client doesn't need to seek out for avoidance anymore, uh, but instead relies on a more natural and healthy emotion regulation. So now we look at the simulation results from the model we've just shown. And here we look at the first situation. So the situation without therapy. And what we see here, the blue lines over here, these represent the avoidance regulation. And we see it goes up and down. So that means that the client feels bad, avoids, and then feels better for a little while, but then next time feels bad, again avoids, and so on. Uh, the green lines uh, over here, these represent the healthy, um, actually natural emotion strategies. And we can see that these have an opposite shape compared to the avoidance regulation shape. And this already indicates that avoiding a problem is a not so natural way to deal with emotions. So now we are looking at uh, the emotion regulation states. So the red and orange lines over here, uh, these represent the negative uh, emotions and negative belief states. And we see again those mood swings. So it goes up and down, but over time, it's almost always higher than the positive belief state, which is the black line below. So the client has mood swings, but over time feels more negative than positive. And now we look at the development of uh, the reappraisal and suppression states. So the suppression states are the red lines over here. And again, we see these go up and down alongside with uh, the emotions. Um, and the reappraisal states are below. And we see it's almost always high. Uh, the suppression is almost always higher than the reappraisal. And that indicates that this client is more likely to suppress a uh, negative emotion rather than reappraising these. Uh, so now we look at the situation with therapy. So at time 200, the therapy has started and at time 400, the therapy has stopped. So during therapy, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, the client learns how to reappraise negative emotions. So this is an alternative way to uh, control our emotions. So we see that the uh, avoidance uh, states, so going to social media in this case, these all go down during therapy and also stay down after therapy. On the other hand, uh, the threshold to seek out for avoidance, so the threshold to go back to social media, that goes up. And that indicates that now the client has learned uh, different ways to uh, regulate emotions. The client is less likely to go back to that, uh, social media. Uh, now we look at the uh, emotion states. So again, the negative uh, emotions and the black line is again the positive emotions. So we can see that during therapy, it's negative emotions all go down and these all stay down and are also more constant over time. Uh, the positive emotions, on the other hand, these go up 
and they, ma they make a little dip, but that is a natural way after therapy. And also they stay constant and higher over time compared to before. And finally, we look at the reappraisal and suppression. So the red lines are the suppression and these all go down during therapy. Reappraisal on the other hand uh, goes up, not so high, but it's right enough to make the plasticity and metaplasticity of reappraisal work again, which are the green lines below. And this indicates that next time the client feels bad, the client is more adaptive and uh, to go to the reappraisal state. So to conclude, uh, we have combined artificial intelligence and computer science to model phenomena from psychological and social literature. And the patterns found in literature so far are also found in our simulations. Uh, and we saw from the simulation results that therapy by re helping to getting the reappraising vote working again, it not only helps to get someone out of an addiction, but it also helps to get someone out of a depression and make someone more uh, positive in the end. And we saw, um, yeah, so of course this model can be elaborated further uh, to study other types of addiction. So now we have investigated uh, social media addiction, but uh, we can also investigate uh, avoidance by going uh, uh, gaming, such as game addiction or alcohol or drug abuse and so forth. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we are looking forward to answer questions if they are. And if you would like to answer these now, you can also uh, send us an email via these email addresses. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a question. Oh. Yeah. Dr. Goodwin, you go ahead. Okay, uh, um, uh, do, do you think that this model of uh, reappraisal uh, could be generalized for, uh, let's say, uh, a whole set of situations that uh, should share some kind of, of, of common uh, uh, set of, 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 of things? Uh, or, or do you think it's uh, too much specific for this particular case you have studied here? Uh, yeah, I think uh, these are uh, indeed generalizable. So uh, I think the first need. Uh, so um, now we have really looked at the specific situation for our simulation, uh, which is the case study of someone who suffers from a depression and social media addiction. But um, it actually investigates the, um, I go to the, quickly go to the model. Um, it actually investigates um, and any type of uh, avoidance, uh, avoid, uh, avoidance regulation. And um, uh, this way it's indeed uh, more generalizable. Uh, but um, simulations are really specific to uh, this case study, but in the general model can be used for, uh, indeed for other types of editions. It, it, it will be interesting to, to, to discover the cases in which you could apply uh, such a model uh, in, a, in a more general sense, because in this case, you already have the model uh, ready for, for application, and then you could just make some details and, and, and rearrange everything. It, it could be uh, interesting. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good idea. It's indeed very interesting uh, to investigate other types and look at how much we can combine that. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Did you try to model using emotional change instead of suppression, using another strong emotional to avoid some other emotion? Um, sorry, I didn't really understand. These tactics really some of the simple thing. We can't e express two strong emotions at once. So if we can really well get into some other emotion, we can switch off the undesired emotion. And this works a lot better than suppression. Did you try to model this strategy? Um, 
No, but, uh, these emotion changes, but that's an interesting um, idea for future studies. Uh, so you mean switching from uh, one emotion to another emotion, and how does this model work with it, if I understand correctly? Yes, by concentrating deliberately on the thoughts and experiences creating the other emotions. Yeah, uh, I would say if you use another emotion to kind of like replace this type of like negative emotion, you are still using the avoidance strategy because you are actually avoiding to uh, you're actually avoiding the negative emotion by replacing it with another um, less negative emotion. So yeah, I would say it's um, still the adoption of avoidance. In some form, if you consider the emotion impractical, why not avoid it if it is practical? I have another question. If I want to try your question. Uh, yeah, very impressive presentation. Thank you. I wanted to see, have you considered, in addition to showing that the therapy is effective, using the model to better target specific therapies in a way that a uh, patient's record of their behavior could be tested with the model and it could potentially advise or recommend like specific therapy uh, goals or targets? Yeah, th this would be a very interesting subject to look into also. Um, but um, because this, uh, our study is just a case study. Um, so in our scenario, the um, therapy is only concentrating on like um, teaching the person how to use reappraisal strategy. But of course, you can also use some other ways for example, giving some medications, then I would say like the second layer, uh, the first layer and second layer uh, will be changed uh, because um, it, yeah, I can imagine medications uh, are related to like your brain or your neuron, like the function of your neurons. Uh, yeah, so that would be very interesting to also look into like other ways of like other therapies instead of just teaching the person how to use reappraisal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No questions anymore.